Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. We kick off today with a new model from DeepSeek, and there has been some interesting conversation lately around this company. DeepSeek obviously set the tone for a lot of this year when they dropped a reasoning model that thanks to its free access in a friendly consumer app and its exposed chain of thought, went sort of viral, rocketed to the top of the US app charts, and got everyone, including Wall Street, all totally freaked out about the capabilities of Chinese AI. Now, since then, and basically as soon as their R1 reasoning model launched, people were excitedly waiting for R2. We still don't have R2, but we did yesterday get their V3.1. Now, the V line of models are DeepSeek's non-reasoning models that serve as a base model to build on top of. Now, given that this is just a 0.1 version update, the model specs remain fairly similar. It's a 685 billion parameter model up from 671 for V3, still utilizes a mixture of experts architecture. The model was released without a ton of fanfare, although the official commentary account did at least post the announcement of the update. One question is that they said in the announcement post on Twitter that there was a longer context window, but it appears as though both V3 and V3.1 have a 128k context window. Now, benchmarking is obviously still in its early stages, but it's looking fairly strong so far. The big thing here is absolutely the performance cost ratio. V3.1 got a 71.6% score on the IDER Polyglot coding benchmark, which was in fact 1% more than Claude Opus 4 in its non-reasoning mode, but the main thing was that it was 68 times cheaper. V3.1 is also DeepSeek's first hybrid model that can handle chat, reasoning, and coding functions within the same model. Researchers noted how the model now has special tokens to support reasoning and search, which has led people to wonder if we are going to see a shift away from having two separate model families, in the same way, for example, that OpenAI moved away from having their non-reasoning and reasoning models have different naming conventions. Journalist Po Zhao writes, DeepSeek quietly removed the R1 tag. Now every entry point defaults to V3.1. Looks less like multiple public models, more like strategic consolidation. A Chinese answer to the fragmentation risk in the LLM race. This suggests DeepSeek is consolidating. Rather than juggling multiple public versions, it's steering towards one coherent product line. In China's hyper-competitive AI market, such integration is less about branding and more about reducing fragmentation costs. It's a strategic move. Stabilize the baseline, then expand capabilities. DeepSeek fan tier taxes agrees, posting, I've long been saying that they hate maintaining separate model lines and will collapse everything into a single product and artifact as soon as possible. This may be it. A Chinese language account called Ace Taffy wrote, If the DeepSeek v3.1 update isn't meant to set the stage for DeepSeek v4, I don't really see the point of this update because aside from lower token usage, the overall reasoning performance hasn't improved at all. Now, it's only been a very short period of time, but so far we're seeing something very similar to the immediate GPT-5 response, which is disappointment in what the model isn't. Tier Taxes again writes, DeepSeek didn't hype anything, but it's getting the OpenAI post-GPT-5 treatment. I guess this speaks to them being maybe the only lab on the same level of mimetic power. They screenshotted another Chinese language post from X that said, the release of DeepSeek v3.1 has sparked widespread criticism. It can only be said that to wear the crown, one must bear its weight. Still, others are betting that we're going to see a DeepSeek v4, and maybe before too long. Swix writes, looks like DeepSeek is still on track to ship DeepSeek v4. This November and December is going to be pretty wild, I think. Speaking of models out of China, a new AI image editing tool from Alibaba's Quen team is getting a ton of chatter as a potential new disruptive force in that area. Based on their benchmark topping Quen Image model released earlier this month, the team has now released an open source editing tool called Quen Image Edit. The tool can perform Photoshop style edits using text prompting, similar to the editing modes released by OpenAI and Google based on their own image models. Still, people are initially really impressed with the quality and attention to detail. The team is making some pretty big claims about where the limited performance is, with Jun Yang Ling posting, it can remove a strand of hair, very delicate image modification, which even if that isn't exactly true, and I haven't tried it yet to know, you gotta love the bravado from the people who built the model. Now, later in the main episode, we will be talking about another image model that's getting a ton of attention, the so-called Nano Banana model, but taken together, we might be in for a big upgrade in that particular area of AI. Looking at some fundraising news, Databricks is finalizing another fundraising round that will see their valuation jump to $100 billion. Sources say that Databricks has signed a term sheet with existing investors, including Thrive Capital, Insight Partners, and Injuries and Horowitz, to raise about a billion dollars. This is a 60% increase over Databricks' last raise in December, which happened at a $62 billion valuation. That round raised $10 billion and was one of the largest private fundraising rounds ever. Many noted back then that Databricks were using that gigantic Series J as something of a substitute for going public, 
And in that vein, going back to the private markets for a Series K is something of an unusual move. You might have seen one of the million tweets floating around that say some equivalent of what happens when we get past Series Z. Still, Databricks CEO Ali Goetze said in a statement, We're seeing tremendous investor interest because of the momentum behind our AI products, which power the world's largest businesses and AI services. We're thrilled this round is already oversubscribed and to partner with strategic long-term investors who share our vision for the future of AI. In comments to the Wall Street Journal, he added that he was not planning on fundraising so soon, but that he's receiving daily inbound from investors trying to put money into the company. He said, It wasn't this way two months ago, but in the last month, it's just been constant. How that relates to some of the jitters on Wall Street, again, that we'll talk about in the main episode, remains to be seen. But for now, at least in the private capital markets, there is clearly still a lot of appetite. That, though, will do it for today's headlines. Next up, the main episode. 